Alright, so welcome to Coco's. Did you start or no? We did not. Oh, okay. <laughs> my full approach so oh, bad, there he right? is. Oh my gosh, there he is. Okay, good, 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 good. There he there is. is. There he is. Wait, so I'm going to mute everyone first. I'm going to mute everyone. So today, we're going to be reviewing Elimination Chamber Perth. Um, yes, we are like, what, basically a day, a day late, so to speak considering it was in Australia and the timing was so fucking off. But yeah, I'm going to unmute. Yeah, so yeah, the a timing, day later. A day later. Yeah, the, yeah. the timing. Uh, unmute yourself, uh, Malcolm. I don't know if you can or not. Hello. Yeah. For it to start at 5 a.m. Eastern. What the Sorry. hell is that? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Sorry about that. It's okay. Okay, I gotta so, go yeah. change my pants real quick. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, for for it to start at five a.m. Eastern is like the most craziest thing I have ever witnessed. Watching a PLE or pay per view, whichever one, for uh, an event like that. Crazy. Yeah. Usually it will start at two o'clock or even ten a.m. Considering when they go to Saudi Arabia, but for it to start at five a.m. You realize there's only four matches on this show, but it it makes sense. Five. Due to the fact that, no, the pre-show uh, doesn't count. I'm talking about the main card. Well, it makes sense due to the fact that the chamber chamber matches uh, is basically an hour. Yeah. All together. I mean, I was gonna We're say, like would you really count Candice LeRae and her friend facing Asuka and Kyrie? I don't count. Match? I don't count the pre-match cards. <laughs> If it's not on the main I didn't card, even see it, to be honest. If, yeah. If it's I not on, if it's not on the main card, it doesn't matter. It doesn't exist to me. I I feel like at this point, though, in WWE, maybe it should because take a look at the past few PLEs. The matches have been not that many. So okay, so they took off. They 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 scrapped the kickoff matches, right? You remember how they used to do it. They used to have at least one or two, depending on the, the event. Yeah. They usually have a, a, a match before the actual PLE or pay-per-view, whichever one. But they took it out for, like, the last year. Like, they, they scrapped it. But then they added this match in particular, the tag team match, the women's uh, title match, just because. They just they did it, like, two days or a day before that. So... Even if you put it in the main card, like on the main show, people wouldn't people that wouldn't know. They'd be like, "Huh? We have a we have a tag match now. We didn't know that." Like, they still added because, like I said, like I didn't realize there was four matches only for the main card, but they could have added the yeah. Kabuki Warriors to it. But we no, needed but the Grayson Waller no fact. Line. Yeah. There's no storyline, so it's like you wouldn't you would have been confused as fuck. Like since when we had a a tag match with the women's, you know what I mean? Like. Mm, you know what? True. Yeah, it, I, I, I guess that's it. The, the, they just got rid of all the pointless matches. I wish that would have been the case. Like the the, the non storyline matches. Yeah. I mean, they could have added that if it was going to be like that. They could have added the New Day and Imperium. They could have. Was there that. any reason they could have thrown was in a it. Grayson Waller effect thing on the show to get over to Cody oh, and Seth thing for WrestleMania it's a night filler. one? Cody, Cody, and Seth are, don't have matches for the uh, for the PLE, so why not just put them in in the promo? And of course, Grayson being a uh, an Aussie, why not have him have his moment there? You know. Yeah. So. They could have did the same thing for uh, Bronson Reed. When they True, do that, but Bronson oh, Reed yeah. had his he he just had a baby, so he couldn't. Do oh, it. oh, that's pretty cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He posted on Twitter that he couldn't show up because yeah, his wife was in labor. Oh, okay. All right. Which, honestly, it's like, I'm having a kid is the best reason not to show up to work. <laughs> right. Right. It's like, hey, I'm having a kid. I ain't going to work. The old physical man would have said, like, ah, <laughs> oh, pal, you got to make that show, pal. <laughs> you know how he would have done that. If he made Bam Bam... Like, fuck if, your baby, pal. I <laughs> bro, if he wanted Bam Bam Bigelow to wrestle right after his surgery, you know he would have not <laughs> given a fuck. All right, so the Kabuki Warriors match. I didn't see that one. Was that one any good? I we know I didn't see it either. I, just I didn't started. watch it either. No, it was a whole <laughs> match. But they they won obviously to keep the titles. Mm. 
So the main okay. card starts out with like the women's elimination chamber match. This is the one match I didn't see on the card. Yeah, we got so Raquel had... Rodriguez. Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, no, you got it, you got it, got it. We had Raquel <laughs> Rodriguez coming in, and like I completely forgot she was in this match for some. I don't know why. <laughs> Tiffany so, Stratton. I, I will say this. So uh, Monday, it was going to be the the five people that lost their qualifying matches. Um, they were going to have that last chance match. And yeah. and then they added Raquel coming in as a surprise factor. And so she won uh, in that match and uh, solidified her spot for the Elimination Chamber. Oh, no, I didn't mean so that. I mean when she was in the matches, when she came in, I completely forgot she was in it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just letting you know like how she got there, though. So, yeah. okay. Tiffany but Stratton. Over Jade. Well, I will say this. Okay, if we're going to talk about that. I will rather, because remember, she only had one loss. Jade had one loss in AEW, and that was her losing to Chris Stat Statlander yeah. for the AEW's uh, uh, TBS Women's Champion, TBS right? Champion, yeah. So I would rather have her come in undefeated, even though if you want to count the Royal Rumble as a loss, I would come in, have her come in undefeated, so to speak. So like, I would not put her in the Elimination Chamber match at all. Imagine I would rather though, have she her like, start. Yeah, and not only that, but people say she's still green regardless of her her training. She's just so been in the, rather... she's been in here for like three years now. Of course, she's still green. No, but yeah, <laughs> but what I'm saying is that I would never put her. I wouldn't put her in the elimination chamber match. Yeah, I will put her. I will put her. I will have her start off as a tag team if we're gonna do that with Bianca and have her go against the Kabuki Warriors uh, at WrestleMania. If you're gonna push it like that. <sighs> I like that. That's a good idea. That's why, totally that's why Triple H. Warriors. That's why Triple H is not pushing her. Now, if you really want her to go and start and be a champion, so to speak, have, have her in NXT and freaking bring the ratings up there and elevate the the, the women there because a lot of them are coming. Like Nikita, she she's back in the, on the injury list for some reason. <laughs> Crazy, and she just came back. So, like, might as well just put her in NXT if you want her as a, ch a solo champ, or just put her in the tag team with Bianca and have I her like win the at first WrestleMania. idea with her being an NXT champion and actually getting, like, her moveset and everything down right and her working with, like, Shawn Michaels and all the trainers down there to help her be more, to help her be more refined when she comes up to the main roster. Yes. That said, I wouldn't mind having a pair of black muscle queens as the tag team champions up on the main roster. I mean, the last time we had black queens being tag team, they lost. I mean, not lost. They left. They walked out. Black queens. I mean, black muscle queens. Oh, yeah. Sasha Banks. I keep forgetting she's half black. Yeah. Thankfully, one of half of them is back now. Naomi. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. The next person, like Tiffany Stratton, Naomi with some new music, which I kind of miss her old music, but she's got to, like, N evolve. A. What? Oh. M. Oh, yeah. I. <laughs> it's not bad. You listen. It's, it's, not, it's not Nami. It's Naomi. So you Nami. said N-A-M-I. Oh, damn it. Did I spell it wrong? Yes. Yeah. And Liv Morgan also in this match. And so Bianca. you're hard for the One Piece girl? Well, okay, that's accurate, too. I do like Nami. Nami? Even though I've seen, like, only five episodes of One Piece. Oh, that's right, that's right. I gotta watch One Piece. Everybody's talking to me about One Piece. Don't do it. Don't do Don't it. Don't do it. 1,200 Don't episodes. Don't do it. 1,200 episodes? Jesus, all right. And counting. Damn, and counting. all right. And also, Becky Lynch is in this match doing a uh, she's doing a Razor Ramon attire, which was pretty cool. I didn't get it at first, but someone mentioned it on Twitter, said so like, "Hey, this is Razor Ramon's attire." Oh, I didn't know, know that. that. Yeah. Cool story, bro. Look, look in the Discord, man. How come you? Be... Yeah. Okay, give, give me a sec. I'm checking that out right now. Yeah, I put in the Discord like that. Is like she's doing a. What the hell is it called? Like, a, I can't think of it. Oh, a okay. Yeah, the, the Scott Hall drip. Okay. Scott Hall drip, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, like, yeah. You know what? Tiffany Stratton had a, a, probably, like, the best gear color. 
like color scheme. I love Tiffany, uh, Tiffany Stratton's gear. <gasps> yeah, for her, her wait, is... for her to get for her to get elevated like that, she just joined the main roster. Immediately is in one of the biggest women's matches of the year, which is the Elimination Chamber match. Like that is crazy. Yeah, she's got to be one of like Triple Ooh. H's like pet projects, like to be pushed that quick. Like, but if you've seen her on NXT, then you know what oh, she, she can was do. Great. Yeah, she's, she's great, great on NXT. Yeah. After her injury, when she came back from her injury, she really improved. I will and be I was right like, back. I was like, holy shit, like, she is going to be a fucking star, and she is, like, she for is her... Like, she is doing great yeah. with a whole Barbie gimmick thing, like, she wants a sugar daddy. It wasn't, it wasn't really Barbie, like, her, I remember when she, when she first came to NXT, like, she was basically, like, the daddy's girl, like, the daddy's, you know, princess, and yeah, stuff like that, like, that it. was her daddy thing. Daddy buys me stuff, like, who was it that said they yeah. wanted Tiffany Stratton to be with Imperium? Those that would not look well. <laughs> wait, who, who said that? Was it, was it? Wait, who said that? I forget it. I think it was. I, I don't. I don't remember. I, Someone mentioned it, saying that Tiffany Stratton should. Was, it, was it you, Malcolm? It was not me. Who, I, was it you? I it was never, probably you, humanoid. No, I would never have said that because it doesn't make no. sense. Because like, basically, Imperium is a Nazi group. Let's not lie. Let's. Hey. Let's, let's look at it. They are Nazis, supposed to be Nazis. No, no, no they no, are not. No, no. They are not Nazis. They're not World War Two. They are World War One. They are World War One. Yeah. No, no, no. And you can imagine putting <laughs> Tiffany with them. It doesn't look right because you get this. No, no. I always imagined Masha Slamovich being the female member of Imperium. Yeah, that would make sense. Well, here's the thing, like. Uh, it's like when you remember when uh, it was during the COVID uh, era, like before uh, she won her uh, Royal Rumble win, she was with the Street Profits the whole time, Bianca Belair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And she was put, they were pushing her, they were elevating her to be the EST, right? Showing her off right. and stuff. But she, they didn't know for some reason, Vince almost cut her off because she, they didn't know where to, where, where, how to push her. They didn't know how, where to, where to put her. So they was putting her on with Street Profits when she got up, all of that, and then they start pushing her solo, and then when she won, now you see her as the like one of the biggest stars. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, easily she is now. I I see her maybe twenty years down the line, easy Hall of Fame contender. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, of course. I'm not gonna lie, when I first, when she first started out, I was not a fan, but she's grown on me. No, I'm not grown on me. I like her. I love her. She's great. Naomi. She won me over after that match with uh, uh, with uh, Sasha. Yeah. Naomi, yes. on the other hand, like I, all I could see was Funkadactyl Naomi the entire time. And then she left we... and started doing Impact, TNA, and everything else. Now that she's back, I actually enjoy her now. Oh, yeah. I, I watched a good chunk of her matches while she was in Impact slash TNA. And she's great. Yeah. Like I say, her first run I did not enjoy, but then, yeah, she got better. Like, what Drew did, like, he left a boy, came back, and became a man. (laughs) Wait, who did it first, Drew or Cody? Drew. No, I I mean, like, leaving WWE first. Oh. Drew. Drew did. Drew. Okay, it was Drew, okay. No, I I, I didn't mean, like, leave and come back. I just meant, like, just left, but it it was him, okay. (laughs) So it starts out with Becky Lynch and Naomi doing the first two because the other people are in the pods and all. Um, people have been, well, people here on Twitter or X, whatever, whichever one, they've been saying that, you know, why Becky? Why got to be her? And I'm thinking to myself, if you didn't follow Weekly, of seeing how they have never put Becky versus Rhea in a match yeah. at all. They have never been in a match this I, wait, whole. Wait, what? You were so right. Now that I think about year. it, yeah. Never. When when Rhea won last year, when she won last year, I was like, it would be great to see Becky and Rhea. And for them not to put Becky, they pur- purposely did not put her in any type of matches or any feuds with with Rhea. And I said this will be great for WrestleMania next year. Because the way how they're doing it and how they're pushing it, 
how come Rhea didn't really have a match every month, which was crazy to me. But like the way how they were pushing Becky and not, like making sure that they would not be together, like for her to be in this match, it, it you know with everyone else is great to see. To be honest, even though I would love to see Zoe in here, I would love to see Shayna. Shayna, for fuck's sakes, if we're doing that, Shayna could have easily been in here. I would have loved to see her in there, and I would have loved to see Shayna win too. If we were going to do all that, like, I would love up. to see Shayna win. They've given up on Shayna. I, so I feel quick. like I feel like some people would have nightmare flashbacks if we had another Shayna elimination chamber match. What do you no, mean? She's she, a great she elimination was great. chamber. She was. Well, uh, she was a clear winner that year, though. Like it, it was, but and like it was a great story. But the problem with that match was like it again great story it's just that it, it got a bit of a like a slog after a while because it's like you knew where it was going to end up so just like getting there it's like i i, I can't remember how they did it but i think i remember it was just like shana crushing her opponent um and, and then just moving on to, to the next one like there, there wasn't a lot of variety within each it was a uh, oscar and uh shayler Baszler at the end because they were going nuts on each other right like i it's been a while since i've seen that match but um i i definitely think shayna would have been good for this one because i um i don't know i i i would have really liked to enjoy it yeah. So the Words. countdown clock starts going off for the next pot enter, and I noticed they added a new thing uh, for the chamber. They're doing the what 2K. Do they always do that. No, the 2K24 yeah. stats is what I'm saying. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. I didn't see that part. Yeah, they're now showing the um, stats for like their wait, overall. Wait, 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 wait. Humanoid. Okay, so the picture I posted in Discord. Uh... In the yard well? <laughs> yes, for her 63. to be a 63. Uh, like, for striker, as if her, yeah. Uh, as if her her NXT championship win wasn't memorable. What NXT championship win? <laughs> See, Jesus was, Christ, that's know, how I forget. That's how you. She don't... had it last year. She had it last year around oh. uh around this time. Oh right. Who won the NXT Women's Championship match? Huh? Her uh, NXT Championship. Indy Hartwell. She was a she was a champion, and then they brought her up in main roster <laughs> around like May. He was a tag team champion, wasn't she? No, she was she was an actual NXT women's champion. And then they she brought was? her up. So Jesus, yes, man. And then like... they brought her up in, in main roster. And then she had an injury, I think. And then they just they kept her on their fucking list, on the injury list. So she had to vacate her her title again. And I think that's when Roxanne won again, I think. Could be wrong. I need to look this up. I think up. that's when Roxanne won again for NXT, yeah. But for her to be a 63, for Indy to be a 63, that sucks. I'm, I, I would have been pissed if I was like, I'm in WWE, regardless if I'm a low card right now or a mid card women's like wrestler, for me to be a 63. And oh, I, and, yeah, she was a uh, NXT Women's Champion. I completely forgot about that. Yes. Yeah, Tiffany strapped and beat freaking, her. It's freaking crazy. Yeah, damn. She deserves to have a higher score just for bloody index alone. Index. So Tiffany Stratton enters as number, the third person, and she kills it. I love always. her gear. I love her gear, yeah. I love it. But damn, like, yeah, Indy Hardwell, I completely forgot she was a former champion. <laughs> damn. But like I said, Tiffany Stratton enters. Any thoughts on what she did in the ring? Um, Tiffany Stratton was good. I mean, Tiffany Stratton, unfortunately, is like, um, regardless of, of how great she is, she will be the resident blonde. If it's not, because you know how Liv Morgan is the alternative uh, blonde girl, right? So mm -hmm. they need the cute blonde girl. If it's not uh, Natalia or Charlotte, they're going to put her in there. Right. So, yeah, and right of, now, because Charlotte is being, you know, because of the fact that she's injured and out, for, exactly. for them to push Tiffany to be up there as, like, the new Charlotte, so to speak, it's great. So for her that, to do her, she did good. She did good. Charlotte officially got married to Andrade, too. But that was two years ago. 
Yeah, and I'm just saying. Oh Gamera yeah, Rado. wait, and I forgot Andrade is back too. Anyway, Andrade <laughs> has he been doing? I don't know. Right? It's like I wouldn't be paying attention. Anyway, so Liv Morgan enters for the next one. It's the shortest dress ever, but she's wearing tights under. Malcolm, you would like your head would explode. <sighs> I do like Liv Morgan. She is cool. I, yes. I I think my favorite uh, fact about her, though, is the fact that she got killed in Chucky. Liv Morgan? Oh, I, I have not seen the series. Oh, it, it, it's not like in the show itself, and it's like in like a recap, like after sort of thing, like like oh, 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 almost like talking Chucky. Talking Chucky. Okay. Yeah, or, or like a Talking Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I, I just remember dead, seeing going, it on. But... Um, I remember seeing it pop up on the WWE's YouTube channel, and it just fucking killed me. I need to see that. It's like, why can't we have more wrestlers being killed by uh, slashers? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh... oh my god, what if we? <gasps> Jason versus Kane, but like '90s Kane. '98 Kane. '98 Kane. Yeah. No. Yeah, 90, the first version of Kane, 98, 99. Nine, well, no, 96, I thought was Kane's debut. No, he came anyway, in 98, off track. hell of a cell. But anyways, oh, you're going off track, so yeah. Next person coming in is Raquel Rock. Okay, Nikas. I'm back. Welcome back, Nick. Well, day, day Nick. Okay, so we're going now through the women's... I can be loud as fuck because I got off work. Oh, okay, yeah. so we're going through, we're going through the... Uh, women's uh elimination chamber match right now okay. raquel raquel entered raquel just entered the match so yeah. i completely forgot she was in the match raquel until she came in match. okay so muscle so my uh fucking personal trainer from mex she's going in and she's going uh she's beating everybody's ass but Liv. in the beginning it's everybody except Liv. yeah because you know tam tag former tag team, team partners shit it's like, yeah, we're tag team partners. We need to fucking stick to... Oh, we're not sticking together. She's trying to punch me in the face and shit. Yeah, because you would think they were like, do some kind of like thing saying like, hey, you, we used to tag together, but no, they completely but ignore that. But here's the thing. Do you think anybody with a functioning mind even remembers that they were a tag team? Yeah, no, I completely forgot about that tag team. I love Raquel Rodriguez, but I completely forgot. Like I said, I completely forgot she was in the damn match until she showed up. I See, uh, the they're ready. I think people are ready for Raquel to go heal. Because right great now as a heel. the baby, in, the baby face is not working, and she was great as a heel in NXT. I mean, she was you great. Tell, you tell me that she's ready to turn heel based on how she's presented. When you see her tight and strong, what do you think? Do you think this is a wrestler, or do you think this is actually a fitness professional? Fitness professional, because she always shows her back, and I'm like, okay. Great back. But, well, yeah. she has to present herself. Imagine her just walking out like the way how Nia Jax walks out. It's I'm so dull. If she walked out like that, you would have been like, "Well, she's not, she's not convincing me that she she's a wrestler." So she has to present herself. Yeah. I mean, Dana Brooke. When Dana Brooke came out, she was always doing the arms. I don't understand why that's an issue now. Like present her like kind of like she needs to work on her character. Like they could present her as a face and make her a credible baby face. Or they could present her as a heel, and to be honest, one of the best La Latina heels is probably Diamante. Diamante. Like, yeah, I don't know if you ever see her anymore, but yeah. you know how she presents herself and how she carries herself is exactly in that way. Yeah, and also there was a spot in the chamber where all three women cover Rodriguez, and I thought like the best way to get rid of a giant is that way, but she kicked out of that. It's a good spot. Yeah. So the last person to enter is, of course, Bianca Belair, the goddess herself. Any thoughts, Malcolm? Um, I like again. The, this is the one match I didn't say. So, like, uh, I I don't generally Bianca is the highlight of the of any match she's in. Most so, yeah. I will say more than likely she probably was, but. Honestly, if I did have to see this match, I'd probably give it to Tiffany Stratton because I gotta say she won me over immediately when I found out she uses the perfect moons, uh, the 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 BME. All right. So like when all, the, the, so all of them are in there. But 
Oh, sorry. Go ahead. But um, I will say, I I don't know if there was conjecture or uh, a lot of like because I know Coco, you were saying people were saying like why Becky. So with saying why Becky, were they saying like it should have been Bianca? They're saying. Uh... They're going back and forth on whether or not if she's being overpushed because she's always getting the opportunity. Well, no. But she... Look at the story that WWE is trying to tell. They've been keeping Rhea and Bianca. Se- sorry, Rhea and. Uh... I, I said that. Sorry, I didn't mean to say Rhea and Bianca. I meant to say Rhea and Becky. They've been keeping yeah. her separate for so long. Yes, also, which is very strategic, like, like very clever Liv. too. You have Liv, who brought up she was the last person to pin her. And she she has some credibility to that statement, and it does provide credence to that revenge tour shit. Then you also got um, who else was in there? Tiffany. I think I think it could be like a great showcase of the future. Both of them were great NXT women's. Wait, was was Tiffany Stratton a women's champion yeah. down there? Yes, she was. Yes, she was, yes. and she lost to Becky. They were both NXT women's champions. And it could be the showcase of the future of the women's division. They don't have to rely on the four or at this point three horse women. Big brain time. But okay. but given the fact that Becky is a face, she is a face of this company. She will always get an co- opportunity it, when it when it's presented to her. So, like, she's I mean, probably the biggest that. female star they have right now. Yes, in terms of top stars, women's uh, women uh, wise, it's her, Bianca, Rhea, and Charlotte, and and rounded up rounded up on the fifth will be Oscar. So you have these five girls, these five women, being the faces of the company. Like they're the, the most known Bailey? right now. Yeah. Bailey, Bailey, give or take, will be up there. But like, if you have to say who is your top five, who is the top five, like right now, the top five you know up there, they will say the five I just mentioned. They wouldn't say Bailey at all, which I is unfortunate. Replace, I will replace Raquel yes. Rodriguez with Bailey. Well, personally, I I think I would throw Bailey in there because when um when I was watching NXT, uh, Black and Gold when it was first coming out. Um, the pay-per-views I was watching, the very first NXT pay-per-view I ever saw, I want to say was the first, but I, I want to say it was the Iron Woman match. Iron Woman between, Survivor's Challenge, yeah. Yeah, no, no, not Iron Survivor. The yeah. Iron Woman match, the ha- the 30-minute Iron Woman match oh, between yeah. Bailey and Sasha. Oh, that was a good one, yeah. That was a classic. That was and, before, um, yeah, classic black and gold. Wait, no. Rich, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. I'm getting mixed up. No, no. Uh, also, that, like, like I want to say the match before that was Bailey's win. And then it just, it was that, the Iron Women match, and it was Nia Jax. And then it was, which I think was funny, <clears throat> the person who beat Bailey for her title was Asuka. During black and gold, and that led to uh, Oscar's undefeated streak. Like she took the championship during her undefeated streak. Remember who beat Oscar? Wait, so uh, I want to bring this up because you say like, oh, you know, why? What about Bailey? What about Bailey? When you think about the four horsewomen in terms of rank, you know Bailey is at the bottom. Yeah, sadly, and, sadly, and, sadly and, it is. If yeah. Bailey ain't at the bottom. Is either Sasha because of the way how her behavior is outside of the ring. Charlotte, so Becky you, Lynch, Sasha, and then Bailey. Yeah. Yeah, it's you, a you know what I mean? And also, here's here's the thing. I would put Charlotte last because she's never around anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, always, because she's injured. But what I'm saying always, is that if you if you do it by popularity, though, she has not wrestled a full year on the main roster, fucking ever. Well, now she is injured and she'll be out for like six months. Because she has an ACL injury. Yeah. What I'm so saying is, though, top five of those women. If if you're if I'm saying if you're saying it to a uh, to a person who watches WWE or uh, just wrestling in general, if you say out of the four the four horsewomen in general in terms of rank, where would you put Bailey at? Where would I put Bailey? Yes. If I'm, how about this? I'm gonna ask three of y'all. Nick, who is your 
rank rank the four the the four horse women. Rank them. Okay, Becky, Sasha, Bailey, Charlotte. Okay, she Bailey is at three. Humanoid, how would you rank the four horse women? Like I said, I say Charlotte, Becky Lynch, Sasha, and then Bailey. Four, Malcolm. Oh boy. Okay, so. I would definitely put Becky at the top for me. Um, I would probably, because of my personal history with Bailey, I'm actually going to put her second. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to do Sasha uh, because I loved her shit in Japan and I've watched her stuff for a very long time. I watched that moment live where she stole this, uh, the, the Bailey super fan Izzy's uh, fucking headband wore it and like cried in her face it was yeah. great and charlotte great. i just have I, I i just have the least emotional attachment to charlotte really so it's like yeah automatically think... she i love all four but yeah oh, so it goes uh it goes becky bailey sasha charlotte for me so for me it would be charlotte becky sasha bailey so bailey on average between us four Right now is at, at least a three. Yeah, around and there. Yeah. She's not popular, unfortunately. She's not popular. She's not up there. Hugger uh, Bailey was, but no, nah, it's like damage control Bailey. Is... And not only Ding that, dong. the way how they're not yeah. even pushing, she is a World Rumble uh, winner this year. I and completely not being forgot about that. Not and see that's the see you see what I'm talking about yeah and not only that but they're not pushing her they're not pushing her and they're not pushing the story that much for it to be one of the main uh, matches at WrestleMania they're not doing it enough but it's not doing it justice. Everybody in the management sleeping on Bailey and how good she is not just in the ring but also as the character as well Ever exactly. Since- Bailey buddies and turning heel, she's adopted a great character. Well, and now she has to build her up. She has to build herself up again as a face, and for for the audience to to rally to rally for her behind her when she goes against Io at WrestleMania. I'm very sure they'll do that. But also another thing that I wanted to bring up is kind of off topic, but since we brought up Miz, y'all know she's a wrestler now. Oh, yeah, Izzy is training to be a wrestler. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Uh, like, training, or did, did she debut already? She's training, she's training. She's training, training. Ah, cool. Didn't yeah. make her debut, but she's still training. Yeah, I'd love to see her take on Bailey one of these days, just one time. Like, Two student. Later, it's going to happen. She's going to get signed to WWE, and one of these days, she's going to face Bailey for a chance. You know that. Oh my God! I want that to happen, but I want it to happen to Nicholas and Braun Strowman. Nicholas and Braun Strowman. Yes, I want them to either fight each other or finally get another chance at the tag titles. Uh, how about no? <laughs> You're a party pooper, Andreas. You suck. Yeah, I know. I know. But anyways, like, so I forgot to mention that, like. Tiffany Stratton, before Raquel Rodriguez entered pot, Stratton eliminates Naomi. And who was it? Like, I think it was Adam saying, or Nick saying, like, why is it a black girl got to go out first? But then we remember Bianca Belair was still in this. I think they're setting up a feud between Stratton and uh, Belair. No, because I told you about the whole... Um, possible uh, tag team match with the uh, with the Kabuki Warriors, Bianca and if if they're not gonna put Tiffany and Bianca together or Naomi and Bianca together, they're gonna put Jay Cargo and uh and Bianca together. Mm-hmm. Okay, but during that time, they could put themselves in a match with Tiffany Stratton. Okay, I, I mean, I, um, I, I have with- one. Uh, and along with that, I want to see Bianca use the hair whip again. Yeah, I'd like to see it that. Too, she has that big, they'll they'll big look at it as on her braid like but a Nick, Nick, Nick. They're gonna look at it, Nick. They're gonna look at it, at, Nick. They're gonna look at it as too violent. That's why she so, has been holding back on it. Or they just use it for WrestleMania. Back the shit, 
the very first thing that Bianca did when she got to the chamber was slap the motherfucking shit out of Tiffany Stratton. And you're telling me that the hair whip is too violent. I swear they some pussies in the front office now. I'm just saying, it's all about sponsorship. You're trying to get that money, you're trying to keep it up. TKO. And TKO. Sponsorship. Bianca could, could get a sponsor for all that yak on her head any day of the week if she wanted to. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, because of Endeavor, you know how they are. Yeah. They're probably going to like. I would get fired so fast if I were to work for WWE because I'd just be like, hey, let, let, let's put uh, Minoru Suzuki on all the cards. Uh, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> I would put Suzuki. Yeah. I would bring in like as many Japanese wrestlers as I can, but like I, I, I would want like oh, just fucking murder. It. You know what? I will say there has been more Japanese wrestlers on this roster than it has been in the last like twenty years. Listen, and and they're treating him with the actual respect they deserve. Yes. Very first feud is gonna be with the Miz, and Minoru's gonna fuck him up. Minoru's oh Miz. I Minoru Suzuki versus the Miz. I would um, I I I would probably I would... like have to be committed because the laughter coming from me is too insane to not be medically curable. I think we're gonna have to commit to digging a six a six foot deep grave for the Miz immediately. Once Please! That starts, oh my God! Gotch style his ass immediately. All right. Murder, Grandpa. Murder, Grandpa. Commit murder. So, in uh, reality, though, I would want if I were to bring Suzuki into the card. The only match I would want is Suzuki versus Gunther. Moving on. So Stratton goes up to the one of the pods and does a full swanton onto Murder. one of onto Murder. the ladies out there, and then Morgan eliminates Stratton from that. Like, huh? <laughs> You know what? Um, they have not been doing yeah, big spots at them. all for the longest. They're going to whip, and Bianca's going to be like, this is for our ancestors and all the shit they went through, you privileged. Okay, you're, bitch. you're going in and out. You're going in and out. Yeah. No, but you but you know what? They haven't been doing a lot no, of big spots for the, for the match, w though, it. which is... So then... Bianca Belair eliminates Raquel Rodriguez. So, and then Morgan eliminates Belair, and then we just it's down to Becky Lynch and Liv Morgan, the final two. Let me ask you a question. Um, Both yeah. queens of green in their own right, but I'm this is the second like big match, so to speak, where Liv Morgan is like the last to get pinned Good so morning. the royal rumble uh the royal rumble match Liv morgan was last uh to get eliminated mm -hmm. and now she's the one that got pinned for becky to be the ultimate winner i think this is also being part of that revenge tour she was talking about and on top of that another thing that i want to bring up she was last but she only lasted seconds before she was eliminated or pinned. But I'm I'm trying to figure out what is going to happen after WrestleMania when it comes to Liv Morgan. Do you want her to be a, another champ? Do you want her to have a feud with Bailey? Because most likely they're going to switch the titles from EO to Bailey, or to have her go against Becky again. Like I'm trying to figure out what were what like. Where are they going to utilize Liv Morgan? I think there's a very good chance that she's going to stay on Raw until she is drafted. So I think she's going to feud with Becky, and then when she's drafted to SmackDown, I'm not 100% sure. Do you think they... Um... Do you think they're going to do a draft immediately after Mania, or do you think there's going to be a bit of time? It would have no, to be. I, it would have to be. Uh, I, usually, I, no, no, no. So, in terms of like, um, in terms of like TV seasons, you know, television, the way how they do the networks, 
usually everything starts in September. So most likely, if they do it, they do it right, the draft will have to be either in September or they're going to have to do it after backlash. I don't Cause remember, happened around May. That's what I'm saying. So remember when they did the draft? I think it was like, two, it was like 2021 after COVID. Yeah. Remember they were doing the drafts, and all of a sudden, all these predicted matches at WWE backlash. Everybody's like, what? What is the point of the uh, uh, of the draft if we have all these matches that are, you know, people that are already from like other like. The draft uh, doesn't instance, make sense. Like, yeah, they always do that with yeah. the draft. Like, yeah, what's like, the, like, say, like, say for instance with the Miz, what's the point of putting him on Raw if he has a a title match from SmackDown? I like the That's draft. I, like, uh, I like when the draft first started. It was pretty a new thing, point but point like they kept on it. doing it. I always thought the brand warfare thing was stupid because they didn't put anything uh, up for. T- like uh, like stakes like the, 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 there was no stakes to Survivor Series there was no nothing to the draft yeah, it was like, just Raw you couldn't versus get an extra Smackdown. draft pick it was always I, I Raw versus Smackdown been... the, the last time they'll do it and then they keep on doing it next year and every time Survivor Series comes up it's like oh that's the last time we're doing it and then they do it again next year oh my god but yeah so and, Becky Lynch what Red wins Red the match Red then wherever they feel like it. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. also, think about it this year with this elimination. This chamber. The men's chamber. You had five stars from SmackDown and six and only one from Raw. Yeah, because that's the draft. doesn't make any, mean anything anymore. Yeah, the draft doesn't mean anything anymore. So, Becky Lynch wins. Good for her. And then the next match... We have for the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship match with game, the Judgment Day, Priest and Balor versus the new tag team, which I like, New Catch Republic of Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate, which is pretty amazing. Uh, before the match even started, Dominic Mysterio went on the mic, and the crowd just booed ever loving crap out of him. <laughs> they tore him apart. I loved it. I'm saying this man. Imagine if he won the IC title from Gunther, the heat that he would get. I like to subtitle this match, The Fight for Censorship. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they actually censored stuff in this match because, like, the Australian crowd were, like, oh, yeah. heard, giving so the finger to Dominic. The blacked out everything for, like, 10 seconds. Yeah. It's like a 10 second blackout there. That's because all the Australians. Yeah, so Malcolm. Yeah. Off Dom. You actually watched Every this single match. one, yeah. So Malcolm, you actually watched this God, match. What do you it. think of a Taylor Bait, Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne as a tag team? Um, firstly, oh, sorry. Ahead, oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's been um, it's been fantastic. It's been absolutely uh, fantastic see, to see them to, uh, because they like. I, I want to say, was it them a couple years ago? Um, did, did did they win the tag te- the, the Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic together, or did, or did they? Because I think um, I want to say Mustache Mountain won it one Mustache year, Mountain. And, and the Broser Weights won it. Broser Weights, Pete Dunnan, what was the other guy? Pete D- Pete Dunnan, uh, Matt Riddle, and Matt Riddle, yeah. I know uh, that he came up with a uh, Roderick Strong one year. Mm-hmm. Before Roderick turned on him. Yeah. So, but I like this uh, name of the. Uh, oh my God! What was it called again? Uh, New Catch City. New Catch City. It's a take on the Catch It's Catch Wrestling and uh, their former tag team name of the British Republic. I think it was in the Indies. The first time I saw it, I thought it was a play on uh, New Jack City. New. J- I love that movie. That was a good movie. Was a sniper. Why would wait? wait. Why would two English blokes, blokes, why would two English blokes go? You know what? Let's put, let's let's put our name, let's pay a, a homage to a black film that we let's have never seen. Let's name ourselves seen. after a Wesley Snipes movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, saw, they have uh, never seen a movie. They have never seen that movie. So why would they do that? You don't know I if they've never seen that movie. movie. That was my thought immediately honestly, afterwards. I'm like, wait, why would two British guys? 
like enjoyed New Jack City. And and then obviously, it, it almost made me think like, what if Gunther's favorite movie is like Goodfellas or something like that? Like just just something completely out there. And uh, but but uh, but then uh, Coco, you told me of, um, or I think it was you or someone else told me of the that they were part of um, a faction on the indies called, I think, New Catch City. I just said that. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, so uh, they were, in terms of, like, WWE shit, for NXT UK, it was... Uh, for United both Empire. And, Bullshit, both, something. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. It was both Pete and Tyler, along with Trent Seven, and it was something like British Strong Style. British Strong something Style, like that's the that. one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's that was their little thing. And, um, oh yeah, catch uh, wrestling. Yes. And also, I like how Corey yeah, Graves was like, "You catch wrestling." Like Sorry. Go then, ahead. Then it, it sounds like a clothing store. Yeah, that's what Corey Graves said. It sounds like a clothing store. Come get your clothes at the New Catch Republic. <laughs> it, it kills me every single time. But I will say. Them together on the main roster, especially now that he's shedded the Butch gimmick once and for Thank all. Thank God. I am I am so happy because now we can see Pete Dunn and Tyler Bay because, like, as much as I would love to see him in the solo mid-card scene, Pete Dunn in the tag scene works just as well. And now with um, – I enjoyed his time with Ridge Holland. They were a great tag team, put on some great technical, brutal bouts. Um, But I just got to say, him with, like, tonight, the match, even though you couldn't see some of it, um, thanks, Dom, um, I thought it was great. Like, it it, it was, of course, like, it it was a... It was a tag match. Like, it, it wasn't anything too special, but it was a great bout, in my opinion. I can also say that Tyler Bates, this is his first uh, PLE main roster pay-per-view, PLE. He's been on NXT oh, sh- PLEs, but this is the first time he's actually been on a main roster P- PLEs. You know what I mean? I didn't even think of that. Uh, yeah, because Pete Dunne's been on them before, but never Tyler Bates. And he's been with the company for years. Like He was their second ever UK champion. Yeah. And he started out like as a young lad, and now he's a full-grown man. Just like, damn. Wait, no, he he wasn't the second. He was the first. Was he the first UK? Ch- yeah, he was the first. Yeah. Yeah, he lost oh, he to Tyler Bate. It Who was did? Tyler or, or Pete Dunn? Hold on, let me look. It was Tyler Pete got third. Yeah, I'm. That's a damn you know, oh yeah, fight. United Kingdom champion, first ever Tyler Bate, then Pete Dunne, and then your boy Walter. I okay oh. didn't know didn't know Bate won that. All I knew was that in terms of like being the face of the UK division, like Pete Dunne was like top champ. Yeah. Period. And the guy is a yeah, good was, wrestler. A he, yeah, the British until, the British uh, can until recently wrestle. Someone you know? much better decided to be like, you know what? It's my time. Pete Dunne. No, Gunther. Gunther, Walter, when he was called Walter. Walter at the time, yeah. Or better known, Walter. Walter. But um, I, I of course, I, like I, I enjoyed the heel work in this match, and um, I, I think probably my my favorite spot of the the, the match is just when um, I, I think you get a look at a crowd and someone's just, uh, I think saying to Dominic. Fuck off. <laughs> I missed half of this match because I was getting my food. I was making food. I was getting chicken. But, um, uh, the, the, uh, crap, the, the, the finish. Whoa, 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 uh, or not the finish of Coco. Whoa, 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 what was your favorite, uh, spot of the match? I didn't even pay attention to the tag match, to be honest with you. I think it's, you know what? Like, I'm kind of bored. Like, I don't know. I'm bored with the tag team divisions. Like, I feel like they need to split. They need to split the titles. They like, do. I'm I'm yeah. tired of seeing them, like, just on one tag team, and no one is really getting an opportunity like that. Yeah, let them. I, like, it, it if they're not putting them, if they're not reunite, if they're not unifying them into one, it's like what? Yeah, yeah, they they really like just split it. Like, 
I don't know if they're trying to make it sure like it's going to be unified and that way every tag team available can have a match, but like it needs to split. Like I'm thinking well, to myself when uh when both Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens uh lost, I'm thinking okay, maybe they can split it now when they lost it to, to the Judgment Day. I was like that maybe they should split it so that way we can have some matches, but they're not doing that. And it's, I don't know. I feel like it's just stale. Like it's not, I don't know. I, I, I'm not really paying attention, unfortunately. I, I, I think what I, I, I think now that you say it like that, it, I think it's because there's, there's a they aren't doing a lot with the, the tag team division because I, I feel like, I don't know. It, it feel it, it feels either stale or it feels like they're playing the waiting game. Like they're waiting for like after WrestleMania. But if I'm being honest at this current point, I can't picture a tag team that would dethrone the brothers. Judgment Day. The Creed like, Brothers. Like I no, they're say, they're still new. They're still new. Yeah, I, I feel like they'd have to really push them like immediately in order to like big in order to get them on that main. We, we were talking spot, about the like, Key Brothers when this happened, and like it was funny as hell that I'm not knowing who he were when he. So <laughs> that was killing me. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> in terms, in terms of like tag team that can really like win against the Judgment Day, right now Street Profits, um, who else? Alpha Academy. If you if you really want to push them again. Um, no, 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 Street Profit, uh, Street Profits, DIY, DIY right now is, like, probably the most, what, contentious, not contentious, excuse me, they're the most tag team right now that can, like, push, even New Catch Republic, like, oh, what about them. Offers of Pain, they're back, oh, yeah, yeah, no, but they're part of, they're part of the Final Testament, and, yeah, but they're still a tag team, another... like, imagine if they beat them, like, yeah, cross. But, then, but that's like heel versus heel and you're not you're not supposed to do that you don't want to do that yeah but that okay, was the old then, way this is the tko era because i want to understand why they won't because there was so few tag teams to begin with when they actually were trying to push the tag team titles for for a while I mean, hell, they, they, can, have they, can, no I mean they can give it to, the but see, they yeah. can give it to Austin Theory and Grayson Waller, have them bounce around and be like, hey, we're the, we're uh, the best, you're not, uh, we're the best, you know what I mean, do something, give it to Imperium if you're going to do that. They begin to I was going to say, allow me to present a question upon you guys, why the fuck haven't they put the belts on Imperium yet? Crazy, yeah, right? that's crazy, man. Well, you know, no, no, no. You know why? Because Judgment Day. If you look at the popularity, when you look at the popularity, Judgment Day is they keep up. pussyfooting around it. Yeah, and Judgment Day is above Aperium. So speaking of Grace and Waller, so Finn Balor wins the, with the Coupe de Gras and they retain the titles, and then we have the Grace and Waller effect. Am I still here? Oh, yeah, the Grace and Waller effect, where he, uh, I, I don't know if he gave. Um, his shoe to someone to do a shoey, or if he, or if a fan gave his shoe so he could give the uh, fan a shoey. They all, they all these men gave him a shoe. I think fans three. I like. I can't help but like. I I like. I both want to try a shoey with my crazy ass nature, but at the same time, I can't help but thinking like this is how the uh, the fucking plague in The Last of Us started. Yeah, wait, like w- with us. fungus, yeah. just like all that yeah. shit. No, thank you. Hey, Grayson Waller, well, Austin Fury is there, shoot. and he's with Austin Fury, and Austin Fury would announce his, who wasn't announced Cody saying like, oh, the I man mean, I don't to- think anybody should be doing those to begin with. Yeah, he announces Cody by saying, like, the man who can finish a story or some shit like that. I thought that was funny. That was yeah. hilarious. Yeah, Seth Rollins comes out first, and then Cody Rhodes comes out. I'm, I'm going to call him the Cody Luger from now on, because this fucking guy, if he, do- if he doesn't finish the story at WrestleMania, I'm giving up on this dude. <laughs> oh, my God. He's going to finish it. Quit calling him Luger. He's the all American. me off every he, time you do. He, he, he's the all-American Lex Luger from WWE. Uh, what? Uh, Nick, do you already uh, all the American Lex? Courtney and, um, oh, I'm sorry, Nick. Where did everyone else go? Still here, Nick. What are you doing? What are you doing, Nick? Oh, uh, Nick, can you hear us? Can you hear us, Nick? 
I can hear you. I can't hear everyone else. Because uh, we're ta one is talking right now. That's why. Ah. All right. You can leave and come back in. I guess. What was I saying? All American Lex Luger. That gimmick uh. where like he kept on chasing the title. It kept on losing, and by by the end of it, nobody, st everybody stopped caring about Lex Luger. This is what's happening to Cody Rhodes. He even has a bus from ADW. <laughs> no, but like, like, I don't know. I honestly f feel like this whole time, like I I know it's been long. I know it's been long, but ever since WrestleMania 39, I know we should have lost the title there, but. I I I was I said it then and I'll say it here. They're saving it for WrestleMania 40. So be, because 39 is like a good place to end the story, but but ending it in a WrestleMania, a big WrestleMania, four zero, forty. Yeah, the even. Well, yeah, you gotta even. remember we were talking about this also. Like, what was the first WrestleMania match? A tag team match. I I did uh, say main that event, main event match, but. Yeah. So, like, uh, actually, to get back to the Grayson Waller effect segment, uh, I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Uh, firstly, Seth is a couple days from being cleared. Thank God. Yeah. Pretty, uh... I am so happy we Pretty. can get a fucking Seth match in Mania. Wait, so you said that it was a WrestleMania, uh, the first WrestleMania was a tag match. No, I meant the main yeah, event. Yeah, the first the, WrestleMania the, the, main event. Main event match for the WrestleMania, yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. So who would be a tag team partner for Cody Rhodes? Seth Rollins, because they obviously said it like if No, because Seth Rollins and, and Drew are having their match. But I'm talking so about night was... um, night one, like they could have Cody no. and Seth versus uh no. Roman and Rock and then night two Cody versus Roman. No, no, that it it won't it it doesn't look right. So who who if it, it, it can't be right Seth what's happening. No, if it can't be uh, Seth, who else is gonna be? Uh, is uh, I don't, I bring back <laughs> Ted, brother Dustin. <laughs> no, bring back Ted DiBiase Jr. and have Priceless together. Dude is in jail. Dude is in jail. How about Randy? Randy. Who? Who? Randy. Randy. It would have oh, to be. Oh yeah, Randy. that too. Or L.A. Knight. L.A. Knight. Ooh, that'd be nice. Yeah. Well, no, I I feel like if they were to bring in L.A. Knight, that would just end in A.J. being a dick. Well, Seth did say at the Grayson Waller effect that, hey, I'm down with you if you need a tag team partner. So he's in. Yeah, but it just doesn't look right for it to be a tag team match on WrestleMania night one, and in night two, you really go for the story. Well, you, gotta, you, like, well, you gotta, like, play, you gotta play with the crybaby Cody marks, like, the play with her feelings, because you know how they've been bitching and whining all the time. These same so-called marks that are crying and bitching are the same ones that didn't want him to finish the story. That's exactly. how backwards. That's how backwards these odd uh, this audience is when it comes to like, wrestling watching fans are the most freaking... fickle. You want something, they get something. that's like we don't want this. We want no, this. but it's just too much. Like yeah. the remember, back and forth. It's like come on. Remember when they wrestling wanted Roman? Fans... And... Remember, sorry, I... when remember they want that? Yeah, sorry. Right when the shield came and they go like, we want Roman to be unstoppable, and they did that. It's like we don't want this. The you see the problem is not that they did it. the The problem is the execution, how they did it. Because mm. like half the time, for all my time being a wrestling fan, ever since starting, I want to say 2013, 2014, this WrestleMania, I will say is going to be my 10th WrestleMania because technically I started at WrestleMania 31, but uh, I say I firstly watched WrestleMania 30 through Twitter. Wait, tweets. I don't know how not. you, I don't know how you watch WrestleMania 30 through Twitter. Oh, it was awful. I didn't say it was good. <laughs> <laughs> That's how into wrestling I was at the time. And just, I don't know, for the sentimental value of it and for the fact that, like, it just makes the most sense to me. Um, fuck, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so you lost your train of thought. So uh, Austin Fury goes on the mic, starts saying rock lines, and the best moment is where he goes like, 
if you smell, and then Seth just froze me into the corner. He's still saying smell. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that was probably uh, God damn it. I was gonna say highlight of the night, but the elimination chamber match has a fucking some bangers in that. Yeah. But um. I honestly, yeah, well, when he goes, if you smell, and then just right into the Grayson Waller effect sign. Yeah, and Grayson's just in the background, we're like, hey, uh, don't, you can destroy everything except for this plant right here. Leave this plant alone. Oh my god, Mitch is back. Mitch is back? Yeah, Mitch, uh, Dean Ambrose's plant friend. Oh, that. Oh my god, the bad era of that. Okay. Hey, Mitch was great, okay? Yeah. Anyway, so the next match is the men's Illumination Chamber match. Oh my god. Okay. The men's Illumination Chamber match. Uh, you guys can say your piece, but please save Kevin Owens for me. Okay. So it is like Kevin Owens comes in, does his thing, and then it was like uh, Bobby Lashley, the main Bobby Lashley, and along comes Randy Orton and Logan Paul, and our boy Drew McIntyre, and then LA Knight was the fastest entrance ever because he just walks in there i love it the so, mega star is all about business yeah so it starts out with mcintyre and kevin owens going at it bots malcolm uh, go ahead um well firstly what i wanted to say was um about when logan paul entered uh well first kevin owens entered of course but logan paul coming in and this is probably like Kevin Owens funny spot number one of the night where he just smiles at Logan Paul while Logan smiles back at him and then just starts headbutting the bloody uh cell. Yeah, the pod bay bat. The yeah. pod. And it just I nearly pissed myself with <laughs> laughter when I yeah. saw that. That like Kevin Owens, like he was going through that whole anger management thing, but I hope he stays angry. Because it's just, when Kevin Owens is angry, it's the funniest thing on the planet. Yeah, it is. Kevin Owens is uh, is amazing. And like, yeah, it doesn't have the like, best body, but he has that dad bod. So for a big man, he can do some moves. Yeah, he's probably one of the best technical wrestlers in WWE right now, in my opinion. But that's still saying something. He's like he, he's been wrestling. I want to say for almost twenty, uh, twenty years, twenty two years. He's been um, around a long time since two thousand seven, I believe, starting Ring of Honor. But it's just, he's killed it every single time, and I hope he gets a world title opportunity soon. And um, and, and then was of course supposed yeah, to was Chris Jericho for the Universal Title, but then Goldberg came in. And squash and that. Then, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and then uh, the, the the second, sorry, who uh, who started out the match again? Uh, Drew Mac McIntyre and Owens, yeah. No, it was LA Knight. Oh, LA Knight and, oh, uh, yeah. LA oh, Knight, LA Knight yeah, and Drew yeah, McIntyre, um... sorry. LA Knight and Drew McIntyre. And then uh, I, I can't remember if it was, uh, I, I can't remember who it was that LA Knight was doing it to. Um, but, or, uh, h hitting the pot against, cause I'm, I'm, I think it was when Logan Paul came out, but I think Logan Paul came, yeah, he came out second to last, uh, while Kevin Owens was still in the pod. Funny moment number two, um, uh, LA Knight was, I'm pretty sure it was Drew, was hitting Drew against, um, uh, against Kevin Owens' cell, and Kevin Owens just goes along with it, and just, decides to hit the cell along with him probably <laughs> not owens doing damage but it's just kevin owens just being kevin owens and then he he just like just right. starts clapping yeah. afterwards and and then kevin owens enters finally into the pot into the ring yes and he just and goes a, wild and he goes wild he goes wild also, the uh, pop up power bombs. Also, Ooh. the stats for 2K24. How is it? Bobby Lashley at 89 and Logan Paul at 90 fucking one. Well, the championship does help. Yeah, yeah. Very true. And um, and I will say that his popularity does help, but also like he he hasn't had a bad match yet. That's. 
Logan Paul has done great matches. Like I don't like him as a guy, as a as a person. I think he's a piece of shit for what he did in 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 Japan for was a Suicide Forest. But he's, but he's great such at wrestling. a good heel. He's so good at wrestling, even though he's only had what eight matches. Eight or nine, I think, at this point. And yeah. like, I think he's he's slowly moving into, I think, full time status with more training, more time. I want to say. My guess is by the time SummerSlam comes around, Logan Paul is going to be the uh, the full timer. I think he's going to become because he. I know he quit boxing so he can go full in on wrestling. Yeah, Jake Paul, his brother, he's doing boxing still. I'd like to see him come in. I wonder if he can be as good as Logan in wrestling. Jake, I I don't think that's a good idea. Like Logan is one thing. Jake Paul is another. Yeah. I, oh my god. Jake Paul has his own thing. Like it's like he went. To, uh, what was his name? That rapper dude. He went to his house and like docks him, and by accident. Oh, Machine yeah. Gun Kelly? I, no, not Machine Gun Kelly. That nice dude. Like. Uh, oh, I know. A uh, little dicky. No, the other guy. Oh God, I need to look this up. Hold on. All I know is that. Uh, Michael Cole, when Jake Paul entered, I want to say during Crown Jewel, called him the problem child. Post Malone, that's his name. Post, okay. In 2017. Okay, so yeah. So then Bobby Lashley enters, and Almighty just goes nuts. And did he, he, he like spears, who was it, Kevin Owens, into the glass pod? Right, yeah, that was a great spot. That legit looked like a uh, a, a a fucking brutal like uh, cell spot because like b- before the way the cells were shaped, they were circular. It, it looked like it's a little yeah, bit circular. Now it's like a rectangle, little bit circular, easier to break, and and now with like the metal bars in the way, it's like that. There's more room for error. It seems yeah. like. Like the original, I, what do you like better, the original chamber or this new chamber? I like this new one because it's a little safer. Yeah. And like they I, got I, rid of the, uh, you know, where like outside the, the ring, they were, it used to be all steel. Now it's just, they have a mat on there. I, I think it was like one of the most dreaded matches for wrestlers for that exact reason. Yeah. Makes sense considering it was created by Eric Bischoff. Eric yeah, Bischoff. Sort of a play on war games. Or, wait, no, I don't think it was him. I actually think the pitch was done by Triple H. Yeah, Triple H. Because Triple H has been the number one uh, pusher for war games ever since, uh, like, ever ever since he, like, gained power within the company, bro. Yeah, Eric Bischoff Um, came up with the idea on on TV, but Triple H was in the, who thought of it, yeah. But if the story is, if my history is correct, Triple H, uh, as a counteroffer, came up with an idea to Vince um, with the idea of the Elimination Chamber, just so uh, as a compromise for not doing war games. Right, right. And then years later, he does war games. Yeah, immediately as soon as he gains power, he's like, yeah, we're getting rid of this dumb brand warfare shit, and we're just going to put war games in here, and everyone's going to be happy. Yeah. Uh... And then CM Punk comes back at War Games. Uh, and then uh, Randy Orton comes in next. Oh, oh yeah. Randall. Randall? Yeah, Randall Keith Orton, the RKO. Randall Keith. They have really put a number on his back this match. Like, every bump, every slap, I'm like, dang. They really want him out. Yeah, Randy has worked hard. Like, he's gotten way better over the years. It gets me thinking that, like, specifically the fact that they're working it up quite a lot in this match, and it, I'm not going to say it doesn't go anywhere, but it feels more, um, more like, build up than anything to a story. Like, I have a feeling, like, I, I'm not going to say Randy's going to retire soon, but I think they might be pushing like an angle where maybe like his career will be on the line or something yeah it was like he's still in his he's still great i don't it was like if he wants to retire yeah but like he's still great is what i'm saying he's oh, way yeah. better and when he first started 
and um and you can I, see I, he's uh, having more fun and that nice l l little thing he said at the uh i want to say it was a press conference or uh i i can't remember what what, what 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 it was but he basically said that like because now i think he's reached the status of undertaker? like john cena the rock like just undertaker yeah undertaker status w with him so he can go beyond the world of WWE probably with his popularity. But he said, like, no, I'm not going anywhere. Like, I love wrestling. I'm not going to Hollywood. I... That's what John Cena said the first time, and look what happened. I don't know. I feel like it's different with John Cena and, like, Randy. Because, like... Randy was born into the business. He he he's a generational kid. Like you could also yeah. say that with John Cena, but I don't think uh, if I remember correctly, uh John Cena never wanted uh he didn't want to be a wrestler first. He was in bodybuilding. Yeah, if he yeah. still wanted. Yeah. His father was like a manager, so he was the first wrestler of the family. <clears throat> and Randy has a kid, so who knows if his son wants to carry on the Orton legacy. So that he might. Yeah. And then, he so might. finally, the last entrant, Logan Paul, finally gets in. Okay. And Kevin then... beats his ass. That gives us... Yeah, I was going to say, that gives us Kevin Owens' funny spot number three. Um, where he, he, he just, like... Uh, like, Logan looks all pumped. He's getting, like, ooh, like, doing his posing and his yelling yeah. and shit. And then just pans over to Kevin Owens, just staring at him. <laughs> yeah, Kevin Owens was that air always gets and me. And then just Logan's trying to shut the pod, and Kevin Owens is like, "Uh, uh no, you're mine, bitch." Just like, "Oh, it's beautiful." <laughs> Logan was Kevin's bitch the entire match, and it was yeah. funny. Oh, and I forgot to mention best line of the night by Corey Graves when uh, Owens got speared by Lashley. It's like Owens is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Owens is dead. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh. McIntyre, uh, McIntyre hits Lashley with a Claymore and eliminates Lashley, first man out. Which is... It's weird. always the black man. Like, he said it. Like, it's why, is the, why does a black man have to come uh, get out first? What is this, a horror yeah, movie? I mean, L.A. Knight was right there. Oh, never mind. Yeah. But then AJ Styles comes in and just goes crazy on L.A. Knight. Dropping him was a Styles Clash onto the chair. So we're going to have probably I, AJ Knight versus LA Knight at WrestleMania. I, I want to comment something briefly on AJ. Has anyone else been getting, like, the, the way he's been dressing and the way he's been, like, moving, it's kind of been giving me, like, outlaw AJ from, like, the Aces and Eights era. He's always uh. been dressed like that ever since he came in. Well, yes and no, but I mean, specifically, if you look at his shirt, the way it's designed now, like, but beforehand, you always had the Phenomenal One logo and whatnot, but the way it looks now, it looks like it's going for, like, the biker look. Yeah. Like, almost paying homage to his Aces and Eights era. Yeah, mm. but, the, but, like, when he was started as emo AJ, he always had that biker thing going on. When you start growing up, his, growing his hair out. Yeah, and then that eventually led to um, the soccer mom hair. Mm. Yeah, the soccer mom hair. But what what I'm saying is though is with the darker look, it feels like it's almost like it's coming full circle. Because I I I I'm not gonna say that AJ's gonna retire soon, but it definitely feels like he's winding down. Yeah, but he, you know, like he, I think that was his goal was to like if he were ever to retire. He will retire with WWE. It, I can see that. It does. Yeah. <clears throat> or he it goes back sense. to TNA for one last run and end yeah, it there. Just have a one day not, contract with TNA. Not one last run, but one last match. One and last match. honestly, I I just want to say I want WWE to start feeding wrestlers, not to just like the TNA roster in particular. I just want matches like particularly with Josh Alexander. Well, we do. TKO is now in charge, so Vince McMahon is um, not paranoid by work. It's like they can work I, with anybody now. The first match I would do would be Chad Gable versus Josh Alexander. Mm. That'd be great. Um, then Gunther. Yeah. 
Um, but also for female wrestlers, I would probably put Asuka versus Rosemary. Oh, yeah. Oh, that sounds good. So... I honestly, that could be like fucking match of the night. And because we couldn't get it before, Jordan Grace versus Bianca Belair. One or day. Jordan, One day. Jordan Grace versus Jade Cargill. Yeah. So. One day. This is that Styles Clash from LA Knight onto the chair. McIntyre eliminates LA Knight. And so Knight is out. And like I said, Knight versus AJ possibly at WrestleMania. I, I, I feel see like that being more going. of a Raw match than a WrestleMania match. Yeah. Well, they're hyping it up for a reason. <clears throat> like, be, like, he was... he's Because LA Knight was the one that put AJ on the shelf, right? Sorry, who is it? What was that? Say it again. LA Knight was the one who put AJ Styles on the shelf, I right? I think so. Yeah, that's why he came in with this. Yeah, he did. That's why he did the Styles Clash under the chair. Yeah. Because I, I feel like after tonight, because we, we, we have, or after last night, or last morning, fucking Australia, um, we're going to have because we have no more pay-per-views, it's going to be nothing but WrestleMania build-up from here on out. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So, I, I don't think it's going to be a rush job, but guaranteed that, like, when Raw comes... Because I know they announced The Rock's going to be on SmackDown. Yeah, the, his home. The SmackDown Hotel. Um. So, let's see... Uh, no, but sorry, I, I'm 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 getting off track again. Uh, okay. The so Orton RKO's Owens and eliminates Owens, so Owens is gone. Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. He, you... he honestly, I like. Uh, I I wanted Owens to win. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. I, yeah. I like to see that. I just. Eh. Uh, what was I talking yeah. about? Okay. <laughs> so then Logan Paul, I mean, Orton eliminates Paul, Logan Paul. And it's down to two, Orton and Drew McIntyre, but Paul goes crazy on Orton. So Paul re-enters the match and knocks out Orton with the brass knuckles of the power of the punch. So Logan versus Randy at WrestleMania? That's going to be a great match if that's where they're going with it. Yeah. And also, since the last two is McIntyre versus Orton, like, I'm so happy Drew McIntyre is getting a second chance because he was the co- let's let's not lie, he was the COVID champion. He won in a crowd of no people. He deserves. He kept to... the company afloat. Yeah. But if he and won, it... a, he if he won against Seth Rollins and finally wins a world title again with people, that'd be a great moment because he deserves that. Because like, man, he got fucked because of COVID. I feel like that's where they are going with that. Like now that, because we'll we'll say it, uh, Drew won the elimination chamber, right? Yeah, Drew won. Um, because of what Logan Paul did to Randy. Yeah, and um, with that, I I will say, if Drew wins, I think that's going to be the shoe in for Gunther versus Drew. Gunther's gonna win. I, I I don't know either that or maybe. Do you guys see the possibility of Seth retaining? Um, WrestleMania, I see uh possibly Drew winning because come on, he needs a second chance. It will be great to see Drew winning it just because of the fact that he didn't get the big audience when he won the major title. Yeah. But he lost the major title to Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania. So it will be great to see him have that win. Yeah. But because of the fact that CM Punk is gone due to his injury, they are expecting to have uh, more of a, a feud with CM Punk and Seth Rollins. And Drew McIntyre so, was the best trolling ever lately was the yeah. CM Punk. <laughs> Drew McIntyre trolling is like the funniest fucking thing. But like he most likely he will be more going against Gunther again. Yeah. If if he's if he's not gonna win at WrestleMania forty. Mm -hmm. I do think because of the fact that uh um Seth Rollins is recovering from his meniscus 
whatever his knee. His knee. It's I, always I, his knee. He always has trouble with his knee. I mean, they all are. But I'm just saying, like, I don't know. I I, I don't know if they're going to give it to Drew at WrestleMania 40 or they're going to keep it on Seth. But they really want to see the the feud between Seth and, and CM Punk. Okay. So who knows if they're going to keep it or or have him lose it. So Drew, you know what? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I, I feel like that is actually the perfect opportunity because I, I think if if Seth were to drop the title, um, it, it probably is the safe bet considering, I'm not going to say Seth is injury prone, but he is lipo, but, but he has suffered quite a bit of injuries over his years. Mostly to uh, his CM Punk speaks for himself. Yeah. So maybe it's a safe bet to not put the title on two people who have been through the ringer. Yeah. CM Punk in particular, considering ever since his match with Wardlow, he's been fucking injury prone. Yeah. So Drew wins the men's rum men's tight <laughs> men's elimination chamber. And now we get to the main event of the evening. Homegirl Rhea Ripley versus Nia Jax for the women's world championship match. Oh my god. This I, I, I like this match. I like it too. Nia Nia Jax did a good job. He's lost some weight, got him better in the ring. I, yeah, she. I'm 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 just thankful that. Um... Oh, sorry. Before that match happened, oh. Triple H, John Paul Levesque, Triple H, whatever they call him now. <laughs> John Paul. <laughs> John Paul <laughs> say say his name. Say his name right. Paul Triple John. H Levesque. We're trying. <laughs> Listen, to the humanoid. Yeah. We're trying to get an audience. Yeah. You saying his name wrong is gonna like. I know, I know. The so Triple H says to reveal the official announcement of fifty two thousand five hundred ninety. I believe that number says it's now TKO running the show. It's not Vince McMahon who inflates the numbers every fucking time. Every fucking time. Yeah. Well, it's the thing is, is that they're trying to meet the expectations, right? Yeah. So for them to make uh, to get these PLEs. Uh, international, you would assume like it, there's not going to be a lot of people, right? Because everything is either Canada or the U.S. Right. N no way people are going to be like forty thousand people going to go see a wrestling event. So for him to come out and say the number uh, every single PLE is great, in my yeah. opinion, mm -hmm. and, and, and it it shows that they can easily go international and they can they can easily do uh, a big PLE like that Very anywhere. True. Yeah, like and I um, wouldn't, and I wouldn't be surprised. Sorry, I wouldn't be surprised if they move the WrestleMania event outside of the states. I like to see it in London one time. WrestleMania. I think they will go to London first because it's probably their biggest international fan base in terms of them to like, like they could easily get those numbers up. Because like at AEW was like what over eighty? Was it eighty mm -hmm. something thousand? Yeah, I, yeah, but that was For a huge their, big over there. That was a huge arena though. Yeah, for Wembley. Yeah, Wembley so, is huge, and I love yeah, how the I love how the jackasses are saying like, "Oh, WWE didn't make enough seats." Of course, because look at that fucking arena in Australia. It's a I big mean, arena, but it's not Wembley sized. Here's the thing: their PLE within their PLE was like within a month of each other. Yeah, like as soon as it, Money in the Bank was over, three weeks later was L, uh, AEW stuff. Yeah, so it, it, it's. It's, of course, based on their prices, is going to be different, and whoever makes it makes it, right? So I would love to see, again, I would love to see one of the big four, one of the big four to go international. Who's like, the big four? We got AEW, WWE. No, no, no. What I mean by big four, I mean by Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, oh, right, right. SummerSlam, and Survivor Series. SummerSlam, in terms of inter international, SummerSlam is the only one that goes outward and go to Canada. Mm, yes. Canada is like the only one. But I would love for it to go somewhere else. If they can go to Japan, if they can go to Australia, if they can go to London, they can easily do it. They're planning to do a PLE like in there France. Is a I feel like there is a future for Japan, for a WrestleMania in Japan, because they're building up a relationship with all Japan pro wrestling. Um, Shinsuke has, I, I'm going to say this is the biggest he's been since his time when he first debuted in NXT. 
Um, and um, I feel like this is going to lead to a Japanese WrestleMania down the line. I, I would really like to see that. Like, or, or maybe not like a Japanese WrestleMania, like maybe a Japanese, like like a, a, a SummerSlam in like Tokyo Dome or something. Most, most likely, if they were ever to go to Tokyo in particular, most likely the Survivor Series will have to be the one out of the four. If you would have to like choose out of the four, uh, the major four, Survivor Series, Survivor Series would probably be uh, for for Japan. Right. That does make the most sense. Uh, so or Royal, Royal Rumble, or Royal Rumble, because when they start doing the uh, baseball stadiums, they figured, oh, okay, we can get more seats like this, and it'll be easy, and it's new. You don't have to like build sets and shit. Like it's just it, it's just a different environment, right? Exactly. And I so they've been doing it every that. year after that. They've been doing it every year now for like what the past, uh, what is it, five years now? Six years. I, I, I also like. I just realized something though. If WWE were to go to Japan, what would the crowd treat it like? It's like a regular Japanese crowd. They'll be like respectful, silent clapping, but no one goes no, crazy. I, but I mean specifically, like the, 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 not not like just the the audience, but I mean like the wrestling. Be because like if you think about it. How many times has a Japanese audience, like a pay-per-view audience, been accustomed or have seen a WWE wrestling show? There have been some Raws and Smackdowns in Japan. They are just like, they're, they, they get into anything, man. It's Japan. They're respectful. They, like, respect everything. No, but, like, you... you uh regardless of the society culture part of it, like you want, it's a spectacle, right? So yeah. you want the, you want the loud to come through and you like the last thing you want to do is watch, uh, any type of show from the, that's from WWE going to gym, going to Japan and you hear a freaking applause track or the yeah. boo track. Like, th that's the last thing you want to do is watch a freaking show and be like, oh, yep, that's where they put it there. That's where they put it there. Like, you don't see them clapping. You don't see them, like, taking pictures and holding up signs. Yeah. Like, and they, you know, like, when, like, American wrestlers go over to Japan for the first time, they think they fucked up on their match because the crowd didn't do anything. But they're saying, like, no, they actually liked you. They were being respectful. <laughs> but I, I have just, I have the strange feeling. Because if they were to go to Japan, there's quite a few wrestlers that um, there's quite a few wrestlers that I feel like if they were to go to Japan, like AJ, for instance, yep. they might feel the need to bring out their Japanese selves. I agree. At, uh, and to translate, I mean, they're probably going to beat the ever-loving shit out of their opponent. Oh, of course, Japanese drone style. <laughs> but it's, I... still, it's still censored. Like, regardless if they go international, like, they still have to do within the, the sponsorship or the policy that they, that they sign up for. You know what I mean? Just to get the sponsors, to get the money, the revenue, all of that. Like, they can't just be like, okay, now we're in Japan, we're going bloody, bloody, bloody. They can't do it all the time. Yeah, and I'm I'm not even particularly even talking about like the, the 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 like blood and violence stuff, which I actually do think that's the perfect uh, in for Survivor Series actually because they do uh. love that. But I um I feel like it would be more not, not like the blood and gore part, but just more like strong styles, like particularly just like the heavier strikes, like. Maybe lean more into that. Like, I, I'd say maybe have cross-promotion matches. Like, well, when is the last time WWE did a cross-promotional pay-per-view? Royal Rumble, wait, 97 when they had CMML wrestlers in their Rumble. Uh, but I, I mean, like, I guess that does count. But I, I mean, particularly, like, a real invasion angle, like when the when the NWA did it back in the day, or uh, the yeah, original, I about the original NWA invasion. Oh God! 
or the uh, the original ECW invasion, which was good. Wait, the first one or the second one? The first ECW invasion. It was Yeah, when they first, yeah. And then the second one, it worked up until Stephanie McMahon was named owner of ECW. And then I go, ah, oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> no, but it, it, it made sense with the second invasion where when you have, uh, you know, Shane for w, WCW, Vince for WWE, and then why not just put Stephanie in ECW? Because like they're it's, saying it's like it's the most extreme person to own ECW, Stephanie McMahon, and you have Paul. Hey, if there. it was Linda, if it was Linda, you would have been like, oh hell no. I still you said know? hell no like, with Stephanie. I go like, God, come on, really? I was excited. Yeah, I up think until that Linda would have been a weirder choice than Stephanie. Linda I'm goes extreme. Saying. Can you imagine? <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, like the way how he's expressing it, saying that oh, you know, it's extreme championship wrestling. Like, the last thing you want is someone like Linda McMahon to be like, oh, okay, coming in kayfabe and be like, I'm general so, manager. Linda McMahon and, on the mic saying like, hi, guys. We're going I extreme think, tonight. We're going to have Taz and my brains. Um, I think they should have switched the McMahons, actually, back in the Evasion story. I think Shane should have been the owner of ECW because he's yeah. nuts. <laughs> And then Stephanie, with the whole money greedy angle, fits in perfectly with WCW. Yeah, speaking of WCW, Nia Jax did a torture rack on oh my Ripley. God. Oh yeah, um, there's a I, match I wanted going to on. Brief, yeah. I wanted to briefly talk about the Nia Jax. Um, like probably my 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 favorite moment in the whole match was um, when Nia Jax uh, landed on her ass. And the crowd just, they couldn't help themselves. Yeah. Australia. Australia doesn't whole, give a shit. My whole. Australians don't give a fuck. They don't care about your feelings. My whole. It's, they roasted her ass. It was literally. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, Ripley's family was in the crowd too, like front row and like 13 family members. Jesus Christ. And I thought my family was big. Yeah, I thought the Hart's family was big. I wonder if any of them want to be wrestlers. Hart's family? Uh-huh. Um, uh, so what else do you remember from this match? It was like, not that long, but Nijax did a great job. Some, there were some pretty nasty spots done by uh, Nia Jax that I remember. Like, uh, the bonsai drop looked, uh, honestly, that, that, that was pretty solid. But, um... It seems like, oh, what was it? Um, I can't remember what spot it was, but there was like a really nasty landing Naya did on Rhea that like looked re uh, really harsh. And it, it really, it just like, I don't know, it's because if she just takes it, but Rhea is a really good bumper. Yeah, she really is. She really, really is. And, um, yeah, the bonsai drop happens, and then she kicks out of it, and uh, I didn't think she was going to win the match. I was thinking, but, like, what if Rhea lost? Cause, like, this, but this isn't the Vince McMahon era anymore. She, he doesn't make yeah. people lose for shits and giggles for his enjoyment. Thank, yeah, thankfully, it's just we're out of that, so it, like, our, our trauma can finally be laid to rest, even though we still have some stress from the past but um then it goes to uh the the, the finish with a uh, the Ooh, to the rip, face uh, and a riptide riptide and then uh reyes uh, retaining and celebrating in the crowd with her family and one douche goes into the shot in the security said like get the fuck out of here <laughs> that was hilarious I, I I honestly I didn't notice that because um, I I until I went back to check it out. Um, what what uh, I was laughing about? What was just like just funny co uh, just <laughs> words uh, words when um I cannot speak tonight. Jesus, um, Rhea celebrating with her family and she's the. <laughs> I was gonna say she's the only normal looking one of the bunch, but I meant I meant to say the reverse of that. <laughs> what are you trying to say? It's like what? <laughs> it's just it's so funny seeing all these other like normal dressed people and some like younger kids right next to this 
psycho goth, goth, goth girl. wrestled chick. Yeah. But like, I love that kind of thing. It, it, it reminds me of like seeing like family photos with just like w- w- like one person who's like dressed up in like full goth makeup. Yeah, but she was My always a goth girl from growing like up. They that. said. I, sorry. They said that she was a goth girl all the time. Who? She actually was blocking the crow makeup here. If, uh, I don't know if it was. Uh, on purpose or not, but uh, the particular makeup she was rocking this time, I'm pretty sure was an homage to the crow. Yeah, it did look like the crow a bit. Yeah, very Pagliacci, which it it, it made I, I it just it made me think like, was it on purpose? Like, did she have a crow? I I, I don't know because like if it's it, it's just like in Australia, it's in her hometown, so like. Because sometimes wrestlers with their gear will tie in stuff or even their makeup or whatnot yeah. to their hometown. Like the Vega thing. did a WrestleMania backlash in Puerto Rico. Yeah, or like that one time when Damian Sandow was doing his dress-up gimmick when he came to Vancouver. And it absolutely killed me. He 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 dressed like a Vancouver teen. Damien Mizdow, yeah, when he was doing those. No, no, no. Oh, Damien this Sandow. This Damien Sandow. Yeah. He, he was doing his impersonation angle, but it was right before uh, Mizdow. It, it was still during the Magneto incident. Wait, no, that was after when he got... Yeah, that was after the Mizdow thing. He became the impersonator. No, no, no. He went... No, it was before Mizdow was the uh, impersonator gimmick. Whoa. Afterwards, he just started copying... Uh, uh, um, Axel Mania, and then and Axel decided... Mania copied Big Show when he was doing it, <laughs> and then they just decided to do a Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage impersonation angle, and then they went to main event to die. <laughs> yeah, that's where everybody goes to die, the main event. But yeah, Rhea Ripley went in her hometown, celebrates with her family, and that was the end of Elimination Chamber. Which, like I said, four matches, but it was like quite long matches too. Yeah, it's like it seems like they're going back to old school booking ways with the pay per views, with doing not as many matches, but like keeping them story focused. I guess it depends on the card, because like, mm-hmm. yeah, because some cards a lot, but it depends on what the match is. My only gripe is that there was no Gunther match. Yeah, possibly next... What's the next pay-per-view? WrestleMania. Oh, yeah, WrestleMania Night 1. But there's an NXT stand in the liver before that. He could. Yeah, but no, he's not going to show up there. Maybe, who knows? Unless, well, he could always challenge the Czar. The the Czar? Ilya. Oh, Ilya Dragunov. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm telling you, I, I pray to God in the next little bit that, like, they, that they build up Ilya Dragunov in some way to, like, start going on to the main roster. Because he's NXT champion, so this is his final so long before he leaves. Just put him in a match with Gunther. Yeah, Gunther needs a match. Like I said, best way to get no, no, the not Gunther needs a match. Gunther needs a match with Ilya Dragunov. Who yeah. I will swear to this day is Gunther's arch nemesis. They would get some good matches. I'm saying Gunther loses IC title to Dominic and then goes towards NXT title and wins against Ilya, reigniting their I, history. I feel like Carmelo is going to be the one to take the title off of um, Ilya. Yeah, that too. So Nick sounds like he fell asleep, so it's a good time to end this. Okay, yeah, <laughs> Actually, it was me. I know Nick fall, fell asleep. It was like 2.20 right now. For yeah, me. it's 2.20 for you, so we might as well end this, because like, Coco needs to go oh, to bed. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'll let you guys go. All right, have a good night, people. No, 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 but we should, we should do this again. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, the, the, next, the next PLE is Revolution, by the way. Yeah, I'm A-W. Gonna, watching that. Yeah, A-W. I'm oh, gonna go see Revolution. Right. I don't it's, think. Uh, I don't think. I don't Sting's think he has a PLE next next month. 
No, because they're obviously they're gearing up for WrestleMania in April. So yeah, yeah it's, Revolution it's is going to be, be nothing but build last... up from here on out. Yeah, and Sting's mm -hmm. last match is going to be at Revolution with the Young Bucks. Well, he's Matt. supposed to go against one opponent, but they're going. He's he is tag team champion, so he's defending his tag team titles with Darby against the Young Bucks, Matthew and Nicholas Buck. <laughs> Matt and Nick Jackson. No, but they're calling themselves Matthew and Nicholas Buck now. Wait, are they? Yeah, they're supposed. They're acting like uh, asshole executives, and they're they grew mustaches and beards, and they're dressing up more professionally. And yet, they're still coming out with the super kick party. No, no, they're not. They actually got new music, like more. Oh, they do. More classical. Uh, uh more um, suave. I don't know. How do you say it? Like, they come out as as professionals, is what I'm saying. But they still do the goddamn pose on top of the ramp. So they're just complete douchebag heels now. Yeah, they're going around saying, like, hey, you're late. We're going to fine you $500. Wait, what are you doing? Get to the rings. Like, I'm finding you. Like, Nicholas. Like, it, uh, which one's the younger one? Oh. Nick? Yeah, Nick is the one that goes crazy. He's like, how dare you? And Matt goes like, I'm sorry, my younger brother Nicholas is a hothead. Don't mind him. I swear to God, if they start doing the goddamn, uh, 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 what is it? Like, the, the, the corporate angle, like the... That's what they're doing, corporation style. Yeah, they're corporation fucking higher power bullshit no they're not doing that what was that we're going off rail we're going off rail yeah but that's our elimination yeah that's i can't speak anymore that's our elimination chamber perf recap or pretty good yeah it was pretty good till the next time what are your final thoughts Malcolm? yeah thanks for joining we should do it again though like, yeah definitely. we should but it needs to be the... <sighs> This PLE just messed up everybody's time frame. Like, yeah. it's just like. We started in the morning. Like, they, uh, yeah, I'm not going to be like, I'm not Dave Meltzer. I'm not staying up that late. I tried with New Japan one time. I couldn't go until like, I, I had to tap out around four and go home and sleep. Hopefully we don't have this kind of problem when they do Bash in Berlin. Oh my God. <laughs> no, it's going to be, wait, Bash in Berlin. Yeah, there's going to be.